understand I got a lot on my mind, a lot on my chest. What's going on, everybody? Lloyd Jones with Midnight Comics here, and welcome to another episode of Indie Breakdown. We break down all your favorite comic indie comic book characters um, for an eventual indie versus battle. Today we have an awesome guest. I'm going to let introduce himself really quick. Go ahead, brother. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for having me, by the way. And um, yeah, so I'm Ronnie, or Ronnie Martin, or AKA Ronnie Creates. Uh, I'm the founder of Radical Comics, and I'm here to talk to you guys about, you know, a few of my characters, uh, specifically um, my character All Star, because I came out with this graphic novel earlier this year. And uh, yeah, just here to chat it up. Okay. So. Yeah. Let's dive right in. Who is All Star? So All Star's real name is John Birmingham. He is a retired retired uh, Marine, as well as a father and a husband. But um, essentially, he he and his son they were playing baseball in the front yard. They you know they have a really great relationship as they both have a love for baseball. And uh, tragedy struck and. In in most cases, like with superhero stories, there's some sort of tragedy that leads the hero in their path of, you know, becoming that 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 version of themselves. But essentially, um, his son was killed by by a police officer. And initially, when developing this story, um, I, I wrote this story in 2020, and it was during the height of the mm-hmm. George Floyd protests and the George Floyd incident. Mm-hmm. And so, a lot of that, and well, it. It was coming from a place of uh, wanting to vent out my frustrations, but also um, my love for superheroes and my love well, and my uh, appreciation for uh, social justice. I was born and raised here in Montgomery, Alabama. So that's kind of in, like it's it's in my DNA, so to speak. So I kind of just it, I, I felt like social justice and superheroes kind of would mesh. Yes. Well. And so that being said, the. George Floyd incident when I was in high school, it made me want to write a write a superhero that would deal with uh, certain situ- situations as uh, as far as like injustices and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So the main character, his son is killed by a police officer, and the main character he wants justice for you know his son being killed, and he he's a man of faith and so he actually prays to God for uh, some sort of justice, not knowing that he would be granted superpowers. And so there is actually this, uh, I, I, I posted it on my Instagram so I can talk about it, but there's actually this, uh, this uh, celestial being that was created by uh, the creator of our universe. Mm-hmm. And she is, her name is the light keeper, but Gleddy the light keeper. But mm-hmm. she essentially is a being that was made out of light, but she can actually manipulate uh, the fabric of stars. And so she actually crafted this crystal and she heard John's cry for help. She heard John's uh, prayer and she felt like he would be the perfect uh, choice to to have this power. And so she sent it to him and he didn't know, you know, what, what the power was. He didn't, he didn't even know that he had powers the day that the crystal uh, bonded itself to him. But, you know, there was a protest in the name of in the name of his son um, the next day, and so during that protest, that's when his powers activated. There was actually mm. a riot that uh, ensued, um, police officers and protesters, and I and a lot of this stuff I I looked at reality and I mirrored reality. Like yes. you know, there was a lot of there was a lot of peaceful protests that were uh, that went violent because you know either. You know, police, they're, police, they have rubber bullets, but they're shooting, they're supposed to shoot the rubber bullets at the floor and it ricochets and hits people. It's mm. not, and, and but in real life, you know, they're actually shooting rubber bullets directly, directly. at their eyes and just everywhere. And yeah. so I ended up putting that in the book. And that was the thing that, that made him uh, go into the crowd and try to help people. He sees people and he doesn't want the same thing to happen to his kid to happen to anybody mm. else. And that's the whole reason why he was there. And so um, he's getting people to safety. They're shooting tear gas. And um, he hears this guy screaming. And while he's in the midst of the tear gas, nobody can see him. That's when his powers activate. And so it's like, you know, 
it's thick, thick clouds of tear gas, and he's able to uh, transition into a superhero uh, form. And you know, he's like, "How? Where? Like, where did this come from? Where did this power?" And he thought back the night, pre the previous night, where the, when the crystal landed into his backyard. And so then that's when he decides to uh, use his powers to help the, the the protesters that are, you know, being hurt. And then he comes face to face with the police officers. And it's kind of like a showdown situation where they're like, you know, put your hands up, put your hands where we can see them. And he's like, you think it's OK to, you know, hurt these innocent protesters? And then it becomes him defending himself. And now he has to deal with, you know, a few officers and, and different this things like that. And it's very you know, layered. Very layered, cause like I'm thinking about the colors. He's missing. He's missing a leg too, right? Yeah, yeah okay. like a prosthetic leg, right? Yeah, yeah. So he he's also a disabled uh, marine as well. So he he um actually lost his leg during infantry. But um, I'm glad you I'm glad you said that, cause I'm just I feel like I'm all over the place right no, now. No, no, no. You're good. Yeah. Cause all this like like even going into stuff like a uh, you know versus batch of stuff like when we do that. Mm -hmm. I like to take the characters as they are in universe, right? I don't, you know, right. oh, bloodlust at this. No, 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 no. What is, uh, what is all star? How is he normally, right? And again, it's very layered. You talk about he, he's out, he, he fought for his country, former military, right? right? He comes back, suffers this injustice. And I'm even thinking about the colors that you chose for mm -hmm. the fit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, right. it's obviously these things weigh on him. Because I don't right. think Crystal decided red, white, and blue for the fit, right? Like, this is something mm -hmm. that, well, I'm assuming anyway, is something well, almost of his own manifestation. So, essentially, yeah, so I guess, essentially, the, the being that uh, that was created by the creator of the universe, she dons a red and blue okay. uh, uniform, and so she kind of gave it to him. So it's kind of like by coincidence, you know, like with Superman, he has the red, I mean, he has the S yeah. and they're like, oh, it's an S, but it's really a symbol. It's kind of like that situation. Okay. Okay. But um, there, but there is a reason why I gave him the red, the red and blue because of, you know, the history of like, you know, black men in this country and, you know, him serving and being a, you know, a man that was in that, that, you know, fought for his country as well. I just feel like you know that relationship between African American men and mm -hmm. America is, is a is a it's a it's a interesting dynamic. Um, yeah. And I also feel like I, I feel like he represents uh, Black Americans in that way, like the like he's like a manifestation of of the Black America of the Black Americans that are tired of the injustices that happen. Mm -hmm. And you know you have this diaspora of Black people, but it's like the ones here in America, they there are certain people that are just like, you know, just tired of it. And so he represents yeah. that. He's that manifestation of that. And so he's, you know, this the colors and who he is as as a character is like self identifying with with that idea. And so I kinda took that and ran with it. And then also as far as like my favorite my favorite superheroes like Captain America, mm -hmm. uh Superman, Spider Man. And you know, initially he wasn't even red and blue. He was like purple and green. And then, oh, wow. I, I, yeah. And, but like, I kept hearing, I kept hearing people say, oh, he kind of looks like a villain. And I was like, you know what? Maybe yeah. I will switch up his colors. And, you know, there was this weird feeling where it was like, oh, it doesn't feel right to use red and blue. But I was like, you know, these characters, there's so many popular characters that wear red and blue. And it's like, they yeah. don't own, they don't own the colors. They don't. You know? So I just went ahead and I did it. And, you know, I feel like it was one of the best decisions I could have done because, like, it just it's an iconic perfect. look. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But um, so yeah. you brought up, of course, the powers a little while ago. What all can he do? And one of the things that kind of popped up, of course, you'll dive into the powers in a second. But he's he initially, anyway, fighting during that protest and and helping people out and stuff like that. Is there a level of restraint that he has to learn or is he mm. did the powers manifest and he's able to control them or is there almost a um this, this is two layer question i'm sorry we'll start with the powers right. and then we'll ask and then i'll ask about that go ahead i'm sorry okay so essentially uh during or oh, in the book he actually has a moment where he grabs one of the officers and tosses them not knowing how you know the extent of like his 
his strength. Mm. So, uh, but he in the situation, he's not trying to. Once he figures out that he has super strength, he's not. He's going out of his way. He does. He does throw a punch, um, but he's not trying to be brutal with them. He's not trying to like harm them. His whole situation was like to defend himself, mm -hmm. and so he. That's that's the whole situation with that. But as far as powers, um, his powers come from this crystal that was crafted from a star, and so um, the crystal. The crystal has this connection to all of the stars in, in the universe. And I haven't really touched on okay. all of that, but I'm but I'm elaborating on it in here. But the crystal actually that's also why his name is All Star. One of the reasons why his name is All Star. Mm. The all of the stars in the universe. He has a connection to the stars. And then with his son dying, his son's nickname that, that he gave his son uh, was All Star because you know baseball. he wanted to be an all star baseball player. And so it's like this full connection, not knowing that, you know, he would get these powers and have the, have this connection to the stars. And so with that being said, when stars go supernova, uh, they emit a huge amount of energy, mm -hmm. possibly, possibly even more powerful than nuclear bombs. And if he has connections to just about all of the stars in space, who's to, who's to say how much energy he could put out? That's and, an infinite uh, number right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so um, there's actually a part a part in the book where he does go supernova, but it's more so of a controlled blast. Okay. And it's not he's not, you know, letting all of it out of him, but it's like it's like more or less like a controlled. Situation. Does this this doesn't hurt him in any kind of capacity at all either, right? Like because he's still um, human essentially as well. He so the thing with that he's I guess you could say a supercharged human. Um, okay. So I did a lot of research in terms of like, uh, you know, the connection between stars and man. Mm -hmm. uh, they scientists say that human beings possess the same elements within them as stars. And so once he gets the crystal, it's like all of the elements that are already inside of, of his human body, mm -hmm. are, you know, increase exponentially. So it's like it's it's kind of like the that, potential was already there. Yeah, the potential is already there, but just increased. And so. He when whenever he emits, you know, or explodes with that supernova energy, it's more or less kind of like, you know, he he might not be as strong, or he might be like, you know, a little weakened, and he can always go to space to recharge. But mm -hmm. um, that energy is constantly flowing through him. That the crystal is kind of like a con uh, a conduit for uh, the other stars, and so it's like just constantly flowing through him that way. Okay. But, uh, yeah. So that's that's kind of like the gist of his powers and super so strength. Like concussive blast almost. Yeah, su supernova concussive energy blasts. Um, the way that he in the way that he flies, he's not just flying. You know, with Superman, they just you know. For me, I I don't really remember like how, the gist of like how Superman flies, but um, for All Star, he actually manipulates his gravitational field. Mm, and I like so, that. And then with the cosmic energy and the cosmic orb of the crystal, it kind of pro propels him like a shooting star in a way. And okay. so, you know, there's different, you know, shooting stars travel at different speeds. So it's not like a con, it's not like a, it's a constant. Uh, yeah, yeah, like a, like this is how fast a shooting star goes. I mean, they can go, there's different speeds that they can travel. So it's like he kind of, he's like a living star in a way. Okay. Now, when he's utilizing these, um, when he's utilizing these energies, right? You, you, mm -hmm. of course, you brought up the fact where he does like the supernova thing, it's kind of contained. Right, but is it like contained to the point where, like, obviously he's not destroying himself, but like, what are kind of the effects, I guess, on his surroundings when letting off that kind of energy? I only ask this specific question because I have a character named Soul, and he, mm -hmm. you know, he's got a mon and raw within him, so he can control properties of the sun. But like, when he takes mm -hmm. too much in, and like, you usually only see him flying when he's doing this because when he's oh, walking. Okay. Like the things are stuff is melting around him because the, the mm. heat is still emitting off of him. So I'm curious right. to know what route you took. Um, just curious with the super so, and stuff. So with the uh, controlled, I also have a copy of the book too, so I can show show a few pages. Okay. But um, with the controlled explosion, it was like more of like a concussive uh, okay. blast. It didn't really uh, for this type for this explosion. It didn't really 
it it did emit like some level of heat you know like the officers they were hit by the explosion in their armor and stuff like that it was like smoking and they were just like laying on the ground and then there was a crater where he where he was standing so it did some sort of effect but that that's not the full extent of the supernova blast okay uh, so, oh we just haven't seen it i got you. yeah exactly exactly so it's like you know so, does he get trained then like or does by um by the one that gave him the crystal or is it kind of like a um what's the word or is she, or is she giving him or helping him like almost in a symbiote type way where she could speak to him through the crystal and like mm -hmm. help him on utilizing his powers that way or has so, that his knowledge way, okay so the way that the way that she is she's more or less kind of like a madam web sort of figure so she can always like take him into like another dimension and talk to him and stuff like that. Okay. But essentially, she she can you know she when once he gets his power, she can ex she was gonna explain to him like you know how his powers work, the gist of it. But um, more or less, he once he uses them, he's kind of like learning. Uh, he's just learning as he goes. Um, okay. That's kind of that's kind of the situation. But um, she kind of pops in in and out a few times, you know, throughout his journey. He's like, you know, where have you been? You know, it's, but it's kind of like she she kind of, she's there, she's watching, but she doesn't really interfere with, uh, the, I guess, the squabbles and the things of man, even though she kind of interfered with giving him the powers. But it was it's for, it's for a larger purpose. It's not just for him being Earth's champion, but essentially him being kind of like the protector of the universe at, at some point. So, okay. So I did see a character, Amalgus, like power scaling wise, right? How are we looking at, it? Uh, well, All-Star versus Amalgus first off, but like if we were to compare this level of threat to anybody mainstream, just to get give an idea of the caliber that we're dealing with here, mm -hmm. where's Amalgus and then where is All-Star in comparison? So I would, I would say Amalgus, you know, he, he could destroy worlds and he has like an alien armada and different things like that. And, you know, his whole, his whole thing is stripping planets of their resources. Uh, he was, he's, he's fabled to be the harbinger of death in his, uh, in his culture. And so he's kind of like, he's like that guy, you know, like he was, you know, born and bred to be a warrior at a young age. And so, I guess I would who I would compare him to in the mainstream would probably be like a dark side figure, like mm, along those okay. lines. Um, he he just wants power. Like I mean, he's just a he's just a bad bad you know guy. Like and then I feel like for for a villain, I didn't want to. I feel like nowadays, you know, it's like there's always and not not to knock villains that have a reason to being a villain, mm -hmm. but I think I just really wanted to have a bad bit like a bad villain just for the sake of being bad. finally somebody else because yes the sympathetic yeah. villain cool but I miss villains being villains for the sake of being villains. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And so that's kind of where I went with uh Amalgus and you know he he also has this knowledge of the crystal and you know, he kind of wants to get his hands on the crystal as well, because if he gets his hands on it, then he has unlimited his power yeah. in terms of the stars, the connection to the stars. But uh, power scaling wise with All Star, I would compare him to his first year would probably be like a like an early DC AU Superman. Like, you know, okay. he's, he doesn't know the full extent of his power. So he's like and, and the more that he uses powers, the stronger he gets. So I'd say like, you know, he might have a connection to a few of the stars. But the more that he uses his powers, his connection uh, branches right. out to, to to more stars. And the, the, the older he gets, the more powerful he gets. So that's kind of his thing. But, uh, okay. No, I like this. So, okay. So when you say, of course, he's going to be using his powers stuff more, what is kind of the normal threat we're going to see him going against, right, mm -hmm. for him to gain this, right? Because, of course, well, as far as we know, on Earth, we're just, you know, regular mm -hmm. folks here. So. Uh, what's going to take him to those uh, higher echelons of combat, if you would? Oh, man, I got I have so many uh, characters that not only uh, test his physical, but also his his mental. Um, there's another character that I'm working on, another villain uh, who's kind of like his opposite in a way in terms of power. You know, um, there's this character 
his name is Dark Star, but he's mm-hmm. actually his Dark Star's origins is uh, he's a scientist who's manipulating with he's you know kind of messing around with this dark matter energy and he has this machine and stuff like that and uh him and his wife they're working on this they're both scientists the machine goes wrong all stars there to kind of save them kind of like a doc Ock situation with spider-man mm-hmm. you know and she gets killed and he gets exposure for the dark matter but also being in contact with all star the the both energies yeah and so like with that dark matter energy fused with all stars powers he kind of has like this he's kind of he, he goes insane in a way and he blames all star for the death of his wife and so uh that also that also deals with all stars weakness and so he's actually all star is actually affected by that energy and it can hurt him so um yeah. Dang. So he accidentally gave himself a weakness helping these folks. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And uh yeah, I have old design and stuff for Dark Star. You know, I could I could show I could share some stuff with you maybe after. But, okay. um and then I also have this other character who's just like a madman. Uh he's he's actually human, but he um his name is uh Nihilus. Mm-hmm. So basically Nihilus's whole situation is that he um he was actually a soldier as well, but he was kind of disregarded and stuff like that as, mm. as a veteran. And a lot, all of his friends were killed, but he's like, I'd say I compare him to like a Punisher in terms of like the way that he acts, but also like maybe a, like Punisher mixed with Joker. And so, Dang, okay. yeah. And so he actually, um, there's actually this thing that I wrote up where um, um, Nihilus goes into a, police uh precinct and like bombs it but like he's just like he he leaves like uh clues and stuff where you know wherever he goes whenever he kills people but he kills he kills uh criminals but it's like you know all-star doesn't kill Mm. and so it's like you know all-star has to deal with this guy who's not only killing people but just just kills people for the sake of killing people. And mm. he also has this bomb vest on too. It's like, how do you deal with a guy who's running around with a bomb vest? Uh, you know, you gotta you think- got some so heavy characters, boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so Nihilus is just, once you see once you see Nihilus in um, Darkstar, you'll kind of get the, I guess it'll kind of help with uh, imagining like who, who they are. But um, so it's Malgus, Nihilus, Darkstar, uh, I also have some other alien characters from different planets that also know about the crystal that that kind of come and invade. So it ain't no world. secret then. It ain't no real secret about. Yeah, it's it's not a secret. And the thing with Amalgus is um, he's always been searching for these crystals and the power. He just couldn't catch the Light Keeper. He couldn't catch Gladi because uh, she actually travels through stars by way of like uh, portals. She can actually like travel like through stars and that's mm-hmm. actually um another power that i was considering for all star him having the the ability to travel through stars mm-hmm. and um i was saying i was talking to another creator and i was like maybe that could be a way for him to go to different universes so you know that's okay. that's yeah yeah i'm feeling this i'm feeling this yeah, yeah i didn't realize like You'll see people like actually like you know draw mm-hmm. stuff out for their characters and them fighting these these other characters, but like you actually have a feasible reason as to why he's so strong and ha- and made it make sense instead of he's the guy because he's the guy. You got to be like to connect to every star mm-hmm. in the universe and beyond. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's that's an unlimited amount of power that, and then also including the fact that's going to take experience on his part, not only like consistently using it, but just. The experience that comes with age, right? right so, does, right. does he have a longevity of life because he's connected to all the stars in the universe and stuff like that? Is that spoiler territory? <laughs> I would say yes, because it's like, um, I would say the stars are kind of like, they're constantly giving him that energy, and they're always mm-hmm. the stars are always going to be around. So, uh, I is haven't. He going slower? Yeah, he does. He does age. I would say his appearance. He does age somewhat, and I do. I do have a concept of what he looks like as an older uh, all star, and I, I, and that's the thing I thought about that I was wrestling with. But I was like, you know, think about characters like Superman. Like, there's older versions of Superman, and I, it, it just would make sense for me to do that because it's like I want to see what the character would look like aged up. You know, don't want him to 
it, and, and then on top of that, in terms of like character progression too, like, yeah, you know, the different stories that I could tell with that, like an aged all star. So, yeah. You know, okay. Yeah. I'm getting, um, when you said the, uh, like the power up and stuff like that, I was getting, um, Viltramite vibes, right? Mm-hmm. When like, the older they get, like the stronger they get. Mm-hmm. But I guess my question when bringing that up is because he is still human, right? Is he going to slow down? No, he's more, you know, he's stronger, but are certain things going to be affected with his age? Again, being that he's human, is he going to get slower, but have more strength or is he going to have more techniques, but less power? Like how would that play out? Is that, if that's something that you. I don't, got? yeah, I don't really know if that'll, I don't really know if, well, I should know. Um, In terms of him getting older and, you know, him losing or, you know, anything deteriorating, I don't really think so. Um, okay. You know, there there will come a time where maybe he wants to, you know, give up his powers or, you know, hang hang it up. You know, um, that's that's a whole nother can of worms. But uh, in terms of him actually, I don't I, no, I don't I don't think there's anything that would, you know, make him slow down. The, the only thing that I can really think of in terms of like, I guess, dampering him would be like a, a power that's opposite of light which is the you know the, the darkness or dark some sort of dark matter dark dark matter energy okay. and um, I know that he's he's also susceptible to magic as well because he's like he's he's human mm-hmm. but uh, he's still durable but like it's like it 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 hurts him but he's not like like Compared to a regular human, a regular human would be more susceptible to magic than him. Than him. Okay. So bringing up durability then, what is like the highest level that he can, of damage he can sustain currently? Mm -hmm. Uh, I would say someone either just as strong or stronger than him can can definitely hurt him. Uh, As long as he, you know, he could fly up to space and, and kind of heal up if he, if he needed to. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of look a lot. I look to um, characters like Superman in terms of like durability as well, because it's like you know, if Superman fights someone who's just as stronger, or um, just or just as strong, he can still be hurt. He can be knocked out. You know, like different things like that. He's not completely invincible, but right. that's kind of like the whole gist uh, of his strength. But he, you know, he can have those periods of like you know maybe like a. A supernova madness where like if he gets really upset like or if he's like you know he gets to that place then he just he just turns up kind of like uh kind of like captain marvel's binary mm-hmm. situation okay. but, um, you know like a super sand mode or something like that where he just like you know the aura just like blows up around him but okay yeah, kinda. and you already brought up speed right comparable to a uh, shooting star what have you Mm-hmm. Got durability. Hmm. Okay. I know a character I want him to fight, but I use a randomizer wheel so that I can really just like. Uh, there. Okay. Um. But anyway, nope. I'm not gonna go there. There's there's a character that came to mind just now with dark matter and stuff like that, and I'm just like, ooh. But like, I feel like strength wise, All Star still got this guy and speed, but mm-hmm. neither here nor there. No, I think that covers it though. I think that covers it. Is there anything else about the character that you want the people to know about? Well, there was a, there was a few more things um, in terms of like how the crystal works. You know, it's it's actually and his leg too, his, his leg. Uh, yeah, you know, he's that. amputee. Um, so the crystal is actually uh, connected to his nervous system, and the way that it brings his leg back is sort of like a Doctor Manhattan situation, where it's like mm-hmm. atom by atom, and the elements that the that the crystal constantly has flowing through him kind of brings his leg back. I peeped that in the animation when it kind of went over everything. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of like how his leg comes back. And, uh, you know, I would say he also has a level of regener- regenerative uh, abilities as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, if he's beat like really, really bad, it's like he can still be hurt and still, and still bleed, but it would just like take time depending on who he's fighting, um, how fast he, re- you know, regenerates. Okay, got a whole healing factor. So how quick is it? Like, is it like a like a Wolverine Deadpool 
level or like how Deathstroke's kind of is rumored to be where he's got somewhat of a healing factor, but not something that's like an instantaneous thing. Sorry, I think there's a, somebody flying through the bike. But um, yeah. I would say that his his healing factor is along the lines of like, a, I think it's it, it would have to be like, um, yeah, like kind of like death strokes in a way. Okay. Like, he, like he would slowly heal over time, but it's like it's faster than the average human in terms of but if he's in space then it could be like on Wolverine like level. You know, gotcha, because he's space. closer to the stars. Closer to the stars, exactly. So that's okay. how his regen would kind of work. But uh, mm -hmm. And you said, okay, so the crystals connect to his nervous system. And then there was there was something else I wanted to ask. So there's more than one of these. Because you said crystals earlier. So I'm like, wait a mm -hmm. second. So she's made more. Do uh, as, of, as of now, the way that she, so she has, she has, she has her own crystal and crystals, uh, this armor that that's covered in those crystals because she can actually, you know, you know, make more, but she found, she, she only found one um, person that's, that's, that's you know, worthy. Felt worthy to to have the crystal, but in the future, there could potentially be other people that you know get these crystals. Oh, that's and, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, people that you know take up the mantle of of All Star. You know, that was actually this one idea where I had like maybe I did like a what if story where instead of uh, his son dying, he dies and his son becomes All Star. Okay. Like, cause it's, cause his son is literally nicknamed All Star. So, like, what if you know he was, you know, a kid All Star or something like that? So, in question, cause you did bring up, you did, you did say multiverse earlier. So, is that a real possibility out there that there's alternative versions of of these events like happening? That most definitely. This and is spoiler I, territory. I'm sorry. It's, it's it's fine. It's fine. I mean, uh, I think. I think talking about these things are cool because it's like once people get it, get an idea of it in their heads, but it's it's like it might ex exceed expectations once they act mm -hmm. once they actually see it. You know, it's like it's like with Marvel, like they always put out you know the movies that they have, and then you know when you actually see you know freaking Andrew Garfield and Toby, and, and this, you actually see it, it's like, oh my god! But it's like <laughs> you know you already you already kind of knew a little bit, you know. But um, yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of the the whole thing with the multiverse situation like it's it's there, there are worlds out there that maybe a universe where he where his son just doesn't die you know and it's just you know he and his family are just peacefully around and he's just normal you know so so many different possibilities with that okay i i like this dude i like this because that like i said in the beginning like that's very layered right and it's like just as he gets or potentially gets past the stuff he's dealing with on Earth. There's a whole nother set of trouble brewing that he's unaware of, waiting for exactly. him just outside of reach. Exactly. I like it. Um, there's also this thing where it's like, um, so Glady the Lightkeeper, she's um, the living manifestation of light, but there's also a being that's the living manifestation of darkness in, in the Radical Comics universe. And so this being is also going to be... Um, not necessarily it's not necessarily a being of evil but it because it's darkness it influences uh other beings that that are you know kind of either either an attitude or power wise darkness and so it's like you know you have people like amalgus like he would be he would mm -hmm. be a, a a being of darkness simply because of what he represents who he is and so you know dark star like they they all have this connection kind of like um Kind of like uh, with the Hulk. I think with the Hulk, it was like the, I can't remember what it was called, but the Green Door or something like that, where they, like, like um, are the, the one below all and then the, the one above all, like they all have mm -hmm. a connection. And um, that's more or less what it is, but All-Star kind of has the connection to the light side. And so light. These, other, okay. these other villains, like, even though they have their own things going on, it's kind of like that dark entity is like, the devil character that's like whispering in their ear but like uh on a subconscious level like they don't know but because because of there's this whole thing that i have with um they actually call it the scales of fate where it's like mm -hmm. um the light and the dark and the, the scales are actually tipped in favor to the dark 
so Gladi actually, and this is another reason why she why she chose All Star because the scales are actually tipped to the dark, and when she chooses All Star, he actually is going to be that thing to balance the scales and or tip it totally completely to the light. So that's why he's, you know, chosen. But it's like it's this whole thing where it's like he um he represents this um this uh, what's Re resilience and this mm -hmm. hopefulness that even in the darkest uh, situations in the darkest of times you can still inspire and still be hopeful and you can there's still light on at the end of the tunnel so it's like in terms of like his situation and then in terms of who the character is like he's like the light in the darkness and you know him helping other mm -hmm. people that are going through different situations like that you know it can be a regular person that's going through something dark him just being there for them or just him just being that, you know, that that uh, presence, that friend, like he's he's that light in the dark. Or when dealing with, you know, criminals and it's nothing but criminals and he's just there, he's that light in the dark. So it's kind of like, that's that's his whole situation with, with All Star. Bro, bro, I like this. I like this dude. I'll tell you what, um, geez, no, I think I have another one. Um. So you, I guess you essentially mentioned like this whole thing with like duality, mm -hmm. right? So is there like an opposite then to, and, and forgive me, the one that created the, the crystal, you said Gleddy? Mm -hmm. Is there an opposite to her then? Again, since you kind of touched on this duality thing, is, is there like a, a version of her that's... Uh, there, the isn't, there isn't necessarily a version of her, but like I was saying, there's a, there's this this creature that's the living manifestation oh, of the right. Yeah. So there's he had he has a whole look and it's like once the creator of the universe birthed, you know, the universe and the light, you know, in the darkness, once he once he created the light, there's uh shadows and that those shadows became sentient throughout the universe. And so it is a literal like manifestation of the darkness. And so oh. Yeah, yeah. And so its whole thing is to tip the scales. And when you tip the scales, that's when you have beings like Amalgus or, you know, different villains that, oh. that do different things. And so, okay. it's, yeah, yeah. It's just clicking then. Okay. So not necessarily a single being, but just the manifestation of darkness self influences other entities in the universe to be an avatar of darkness. It's one and the same. It's, it is a being. Okay. Yeah, it is oh. a big, but it also influences people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm caught up. I'm caught yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. So I'm actually going to re-release, because um, the book is actually a graphic novel, but I'm actually going to re-release it and uh, do smaller issues, but I'm going to include some stuff in there so that people can, like, you know, get the gist. But you okay. know, just in pages of the book just to show it off a little bit. Um, Man, he ain't playing. He ain't playing. But yeah, and it's it, that's and that's a whole another that's a whole another thing too. It's like, you know, I have worked on this book for three years and I didn't know it. The first thing about you know drawing panels or anything, I just hopped into it. Yeah, just from just just for the passion, you know. And you know, I've always been drawing. I've been drawing superhero characters my entire life, but I've never like known how to, you know, play around with the panels. But, um first few pages that I drew are not even in this book like it 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 took trial and error for me to figure out like what I wanted to do mm. and in terms of like the artistic direction as well as the story and um between those three years I can even see my art style like progress mm -hmm. like like it was so hard for me to draw the faces of the characters and keep that consistency like once I had gotten to that place where I was really good at it I had to go back and redraw the faces and do all this other stuff. And, you know, I was struggling with drawing backgrounds. I didn't even know how to draw backgrounds, but I learned how to do it during the course of making the book. Um, different things like that, that um, not a lot of people, I feel like not a lot of people really think about. It's kind of like, oh, the art's there, but you don't really know, you know, the the process or the you know, the detail. Yeah, exactly. I, I got to say kudos to you because I, I draw but I, I didn't give myself the opportunity to, to try it, mm -hmm. right? I made excuses. It was just like, all right, hey, I'm gonna write and I'll design the characters, but I'm gonna mm -hmm. outsource this so that it could get done. 
So right. kudos to you for saying like, no, I'm going to do this <laughs> and you're going to like it. So no, man, great job with that though. I appreciate it, man. It's, oh. it's been a long journey too. Uh, you know, I, yeah. I've had a failed, I had a failed Kickstarter and, and it did, but I, but I kept going, you know, and I was like, I'm going to figure out how to get this book out there. Good. You said this, it's a stepping stone. Mm. It's a stepping stone. Yeah. You won't get there. That's, that's, that's nothing. Cause I've seen you've been the interviews. I've seen the news station had you on the like, come on, come mm. on. Mm. So it's, it's we had that. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying. I'm trying to get to that point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get to the point where the local, like local community, sees um, what it is we're trying to accomplish, man. So like, folks see you out here, bro. So keep it up. That's yeah, keep it, up. it, man. Yeah. Um, let everybody know then where they can find you. I mean, obviously we know, but yeah, let all the rest of the folks know right, right. where all they can find you and stuff. So um, if you. If you want to type in, like, there's different distributors that actually make the book, but if you type in, oh, the camera's in reverse, but it's actually All Star Book One Protect and Serve. If you type in that, take you to uh, Amazon to where you can get the book. Uh, Lulu, uh, Lulu Printing is where you can get the physical book as well as the digital book. Um, and that's like $35 on Lulu. Um, the digital book is $25. But since it's a graphic novel, it's, you know, it's, you know, it's 35. But, um, yeah, so there's different distributors, Walmart. But if you type in the entire title, you'll find you'll, you'll find the book. Okay. Uh, and your Instagram? And my Instagram is also in the link in my bio. Thank you. It's also in the link in my bio on Instagram. Uh, so you can go directly to it. Uh, due to the subject matter, you know, the story, you have to put in your birthday in order to get to the book. But... Once you get past that, it, you'll you'll see it. You can you're able to purchase it that way. But um, yeah. what what's your Instagram name for the people? My Instagram name is Ronnie Creates R O N N Y Creates R O N N Y Creates. Cause some people put R O N N I E, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. dude. Thank yeah. you. Um, thank you. I look forward to seeing what you do with this character, man. Because again. It's very layered from just even the ground level point that he's going to be at, and then to introduce mm-hmm. all the aspects or how deep it really goes um, mm-hmm. with where the crystal came from, Amalgus, all these various avatars of darkness. Like, I love how it branches out. I love the origin point that really dives into his character and what he's going to do when it really, you know, spreads out to the adventure that it's going to be. Dude. Right, and then on top of that too, like. He's gonna be a character within the community, helping the community, but branching out to these other, you know, different things that's going on in the world and outside of the world. But he's he's gonna try to balance all of it, trying to help everybody, not just you know people of color, but but everybody. But he wants to start where he can, and you know, dealing with whether it's you know corrupt police officers or just criminals or you know gang violence or whatever. He's gonna he's gonna deal with those situations, and also deal with you know the superpower threats the aliens you know i don't want him to be that that superhero that's like he's he's too he oh it froze oh wait say it again it froze okay we good yeah we're good i hear you now there okay. we go what, what'd you hear all right, so basically taking like what he's done like on the ground level, but not just helping just his community, but also taking that and trying to help yeah. everybody out. Yeah, that's what yeah, exactly. I got to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was saying like um, he's gonna try to be that for everybody, and he's gonna you know start start where where he's where he's at and expand outward, and then whether you know it's dealing with you know regular your average day you know criminals and and then super villains and then aliens and then all of this stuff, but he's not gonna be too good to. He's not going to be that superhero that's like, oh, I'm always, you know, gone. He's going to mm-hmm. try to, you know, try to be balance. everywhere it was. But um, and then there's also other superheroes as well that are going to be within the universe that I, uh, I, I, I did some posts as well. Um, a werewolf ninja, I have a speedster. Um, those oh, with characters, tachyon, uh, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's not just gonna be all star in the universe running around. So he's gonna have some help. You know, he's gonna have some some other heroes that are gonna be there to, you know, pick up some of that slack to, you know, against evil. So it's like, 
it's gonna be it's gonna be very exciting once I introduce those characters into the mix of the radical comics universe. So it, this is gonna be in uh, volume two. It's possible. I mean, I it's possible. You know, uh, I actually in book two, uh, I did get pretty far. Um, I'm halfway halfway through a book two. Um, okay. There's your live update, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. Halfway done. Halfway done. Okay. But, um, Man, thank you uh, for coming on. Um, of course, anybody that's listening, we're Midnight Comics. You guys can check us out at midnightcomics.org or Midnight X Comics everywhere, but Facebook and YouTube, where it's just Midnight Comics. And um, we hope you enjoyed another episode of Indie Breakdown. I don't know who this guy is going to be up against yet, but when we get ready for that Indie Burger, <laughs> that's going to be a tough by especially if that person ain't got no dark matter ability because that's what in magic it's going to be tough so i'm i'm looking forward to who we get randomly for that right one, so. would it be uh, cool would it be cool if i did like some some art or like uh i mean oh when that comes around yeah yeah whenever sure. that fight comes around okay okay yeah, sure. yeah so Ooh, cool. yeah absolutely i'll okay. keep you posted on that one for sure all right i'm i'm definitely excited oh. for that but um man Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of Indie Versus. Ronnie, thank you for being on. And thank you for having we're, me. On the, what, what did I say? Oh my. Versus. Versus. I said the Versus. <laughs> thank you for tuning in or joining us for this Indie Breakdown, man. And everybody that's listening, remember, until next time, midnight is coming. And we'll see y'all later. <laughs>